excuse me, Laura, our Billy Badasses of the Ladies, Sisters of the Moon, Debbie and Carrie. a night that happened a year ago last weekend. And we were in Southeast Oklahoma, which is a lot of our primary research area. And it was just Carrie and I at the time. Our, uh, one of our other research partners, his name Henry Edge, it's a female too, we're all female research group, there's five of us. Henry Edge, Barbara Locke, and her sister, Sandy Coyle, that lives in Georgia. And so we don't all five get together as often as we'd like to because of the distance. And so this particular night was going to be me and Sandy, I mean me and Carrie, and then Henry was going to show up sometime in the middle of the night because that's how Henry always does. She's on Indian time. Yeah. She's on Indian time. And, uh, and then Barbara was going to come the next day. So we start setting up. And it was right at... It was right at desk, right at desk, and we had gotten the tent halfway done, but like she said, as soon as the sun went down, we've never encountered this before. Everything started happening, and uh, we started hearing moans, which is something else we've never encountered before. I originally thought it could have been a bear, and it kind of had its own edge, you know, to yeah. be out there and a bear be stalking us. And, and where, where we were sitting, where we had the tent set up, it was more of an open area. And if our tent is right here, back behind it, went kind of uphill just a little bit, and it was it got more and more wooded, and then it just got so thick, you know, you couldn't even walk in there. But that was basically at the top of the hill. That's where all the sounds were coming from. and. You know, it had just got dark, and so we couldn't see in there. We didn't even have the campfire going at that time. And uh, we just, we couldn't believe it. And it would moan, but the moan would turn into something. And like she said, it was like a, it would turn into like a you know, growl, deep growl. And we were getting unnerved, because I was like, if that's a bear, I don't want to be here. And so we didn't have anything for bear. We had our guns, but, you know. Kind of like Bigfoot, it's not going to stop a bear. It's not going to stop a Bigfoot. It just makes us feel better. We're more concerned with the human element, and when you're that far out in the woods or wherever you're camping, we're more concerned with uh, redneck bubbas <laughs> coming in, you know. But I want to I want to point out before we go into it even more. Henry had gone out and scouted the area prior to us getting there. And she had driven around in a lot of the area and went back in and sent us five locations via Google Maps, dropped pins to them, and had taken pictures for each location and was telling us how she felt about the area. And this particular area uh, had a lake, you know, back from it. And she was like, I just had a really creepy feeling about this area. And we all looked at the pictures and we all agreed we liked this one. It's too creepy. Yeah, we like creepy. You said kind of lake? There was a lake. Uh, oh, I thought you said kind of lake. I'm sorry. Oh, no, Cattle Lake's close where I live. Yeah. But no, this was in Oklahoma. Okay. And, uh, but the lake was over on the other side of the little drop down from where we were at. But, uh, so that's how we picked this location. Nobody knew where we were going. We didn't even know where we were going because we were following this pen that she had sent us. And when we got to where the pin was showing, we had no more actual road. It was just narrowed. And so we had to kind of off-road a little bit to find where we were at. So nobody knew where we were. And we, going in, we saw a house on up, but that was a few miles back. And uh, there was no animals. We didn't see any cow pastures. Now down, once the next day we drove, on down, there were some cows probably about three miles, yeah, three, three or four miles away, but there just wasn't anything around us other than woods and lake for three or four miles. At least. So anyway, we were concerned about it being a bear, and in that same time, there were more moans, but those moans started changing into different animals. One time it sounded like a cow, and we were like, 
Okay, the cow, Santa Land is just right there. <laughs> and we lived, there were no cows right there in the little woods where we were. And uh, one time it sounded like a whimpering dog. They all started out as moans, though. Just like. <laughs> transition into the animals and uh, it was something we've never experienced before and still haven't experienced it again so uh, since it was hot and we had all these different animals out there and possibly a bear we decided to go into town which was about 35 miles away get some batteries for our battery kind of thing, fan and look for bear spray <laughs> and uh, no bear spray which I can't believe they don't sell bears. But um, did get the batteries, came back, set the fans up inside the tent, started the fire, set our chairs down, put a gun in one cup holder and our audio recorder in the other. And we sat there and it started right back up. And there was so much happening. I mean, we just kept going, I can't believe this. I mean, the, the, one time, not long after we had sat down, uh, we, we didn't want the guns to show because we, you know, you hear all sorts of stuff. They know what guns are. I wouldn't doubt that they know, you know. And uh, so we wanted the gun there, but we didn't want them to see it. So we put it in the cup holder where you can, can really see it. We put our hand over it. But then we had our audio recorder and the other one holding it like this. And at one point we were sitting there by the fire and from the, we were facing that wood line. It was there that would not it's back up this way. I like how this is showing you right here. So we're facing the wood line straight from what seemed like in front of us, the most perfect woo and loud, you know, it's just so loud, which the audio captured it, but it, you don't get the effect of what it was. And I looked at Carrie and she looked at me and we were like, but before, as soon as that one stopped, Another one from kind of behind us and to our left answered back. Same exact. I mean, it was like I did it the same. And I said, I can't believe this. I mean, it was so awesome. I was so excited. And I know you were too. And, but we had also been hearing, I don't know what it was. I mean, we, we were like, is that, is that like a, a saw? Because it sounded like a saw. Mechanical. It, it sounded mechanical, but it was way off, you know. It wasn't coming from real close. It sounded way off. And uh, we just, we kept, all night long we heard that up until we went to bed. But we, we, we didn't understand what that was, what it could be. Um, anyway, we went to bed. Just fast forward, we decided about 12.45 to go to bed. And, uh, Normally, we zip tie our audio recorders out away from camp, and then we'll have one in camp also. Um, but I wasn't going out there that night. <laughs> it started so soon, I didn't have time to zip tie, you know, anywhere. So, and then I was sitting in camp with both of them. So I ended up putting one on one side of the tent and one on the other side of the tent, and I just had to set them down basically in the ground because the tree that was right by the tent didn't have any low-hanging branches. It was a real tall, big tree. And uh, so I just set them right there on each side. And crickets were crazy that night. And so uh, the audio that we recorded had a lot, a lot of crickets, which you'll hear. But then the setting on the audio I brought, uh, had, it was the wrong setting, which I changed it the next day. And it, we had activity the next two nights also, but nothing like the first night. Uh, but there was a lot of white noise. And so you'll hear the white noise, but I was able to get some of that out. Uh, when we went to bed, we were in her tent. Uh, she has a different tent now, but we were in her tent. And she was on the end facing closest to the wood line, and I was on the opposite side. Her cot went long side facing the woods. Mine went long side facing the front of the camp, where I could open the window and look out and see the campfire and where we had our vehicles parked up further down. So she's in bed. Uh, she's, she's tired. She goes to sleep pretty quick. Yep. I'm still messing with my cot because I'm not used to sleeping on cots. And she had put a little blow up mattress on top of it and I'm fiddling with that. And while I'm standing there, I hear a cough. 
like a human paw. I thought it was Henry. Well, Henry showed up. And it goes, <laughs> just like that. And I, I look over at Carrie, and she had woken up a little bit, and I said, Henry's here. And so I unzip the window, and you can hear the zipper a little bit. And I look out, but I don't see her. And so I'll holler, Henry. No answer. And I'm thinking, okay, this is weird. And I zip it back up, and I look back at Carrie, and I'm like, I don't see her car out there. And so I'm... That, she's, she's asking me if I heard the cough, and I said, no, you're hearing things when you're alone when you're asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and so within just a, couple, a minute, maybe, I hear it again. The same exact cough, but it has moved over more to the corner. And I look at her, and I'm like, heard it again. She, you know, she's laying <laughs> on her side. She, so I zip the window, and I look out, and I'm, I go, Henry. Henry Hedge, real loud. Nothing. No vehicles, no Henry. I zip it back out. So now I'm getting a little creepy because I think we've got a person out there. And that unnerved me. For some reason, I don't know, Bigfoot hasn't scared me, but this scared me because I thought it was a human. It was such a human sounding call. And so I told her, I said, I said, okay, there's, I don't, I don't see anybody out there. But that was a human cough. I kept saying, that was a human cough. And she's like, I didn't hear it. Then there was a third one. I said, did you hear that? She was like, I think so. But the third one, by this time, was more over to the side corner, the back side of our tent. And uh, so I'm standing up in the middle of the tent now. It's, it's a big tent. And uh, she is still laying there. And she's laying on her side. And so she kind of coughs her arm up so she can try to hear better and uh, we there was a total of eight coughs all in all long story it's a long story I'm trying to shorten it um, it went pretty much all the way around us and we started having things hit our tent and I kept telling her Carrie that that's human sound cough though I'm like do you think it's people and she she told me she said if it is, they walked a long ways in. Because we would have heard a few people. Yeah, we would have heard something. And I just couldn't get past how human sounding this cough was. I've heard animals cough and hack and you know stuff like that, but this just wasn't that sound. And uh, she she had set up just a little bit, you know, propped her head up, and by this time something hit the corner of her tent, hit her cot, and moved her cot. Jerked it. It was like something got a hold of my cot and just jerked it. And I was out of bed in the middle of the floor. She was in the middle of the <laughs> me by that time. And so we sit down. And I, I must have went on for a long time about this. Sure it's not good. I just, I've got to make sure. And we had already been having stuff thrown at the tent. We had, you could hear something being dragged across the top. We don't know if it was fingers or like a tree branch or something, but we were literally sitting on the floor in the middle of the tent at this time, and we're turning, watching. You know, you could see in the, in the rippling the tent material, and you could see something moving. You could hear it. Was your cot up against the wall? Hers? My cot was against the so wall. So it just randomly hit the wall, and there you were. Yeah. You, yeah. And, and then my cot was along the front, of the wall. Hers was like this, mine was like this, and it was in that front the corner. The wall from the outside of the yeah, that's why. Probably so. That's awesome. And uh, so while we're sitting in the middle of the tent, you know, doing this, watching all this, uh, the front corner where my cot is, we're looking this way because she had a little closet like area that came off the back of her tent, and that's where we put our potty, and it was playing. It was spending a lot of time in that area, and we were watching, you know, the, the tent, because we knew there was one there. Well, by this time, while we're turned this way, something hits my corner, where my cot was. And I mean, bam, but it hit way down low, about right here. And we both, I probably went, oh, you know, and turned, and you can see the whole top of the tent, you know, going up the side. Rippling, like she was saying, 
And so uh, we're still sitting there, and gosh, I, I don't remember if it was at this time or if it was the second hit before we went out. It was the second one. Okay, so this just continues on. I mean, it went on a long time. We're sitting there still talking back and forth, following the sounds. It hits the tent in the front corner a second time, but this time I see it because I'm looking in that direction because we're following the sounds, and I see it came in probably this far and actually hit my cot. The cot was not up against that side. It was up against the front. It came in about this far. You could see it come in from the, the hit. And I mean, it was so loud. And it, it moved the tent. We have a picture where the tent has been like hit so hard that it's got ripples down the side where it wasn't taut, you know, anymore the next day. So finally, I'm like, I gotta know if this is humans or not. Well, I didn't know, I, I thought I'd go through the pictures afterwards, tell the story, and then let you see the pictures afterwards. I think that's fine. Uh, so we decide we're gonna go outside. But we, we wanna catch whatever it is, whoever it is, off guard by surprise. And, uh, and we weren't going out and armed. Right. <laughs> so she, her tent that she had had a swinging door. You know, I don't know if y'all seen them, but it's pretty cool. You can it's zip it. Yeah, you can zip it or you can Velcro it. And we just had it Velcro. And so we get our guns. And I told her, I said, we can get our fall for our car and hit it. Like the alarm go off, the lights, the parking lights will come on if we do it this way. And so we stood at the door, both of us together. She's tiny, so we could fit through the door. And uh, we had our guns in one hand and our fobs in the other, and we both set off our fobs and bolted out that door at the same time. <laughs> we came out like Charlie <laughs> David. I mean, we did. It was perfect. <laughs> but uh, there was nothing. <laughs> nothing. We walked, walked on each side of the tent, looking at the spotlight now. Turn it off, and I said, Yeah, I'll read the drive off. 
<laughs> but because uh, it was just so much. I mean, as soon as we tried to lay back down, it would start right back up. So we did it a second time, same way. Came out with our guns. You know, we did have our guns shown at this point because we were hoping that we would see whatever it was, and there was just nothing. And uh, anyway, over the course of the night, it would mess with us for about 45 minutes, solid. And I'd lay back down. As soon as I'd lay back down, something would start back up. It got to be 2:30, 3 o'clock. She was she was laying down. She was like, I'm, I'm going to go to sleep. And so about 3:10, I got up in my bed and was laying there. And I would have just laid in the floor of the tent. But there was this huge root right from you know where we were at. But anyway, so I laid down and. While I'm laying there, nothing started back up, but coming from the wood area, I heard gibberish. I'd only heard gibberish once before in Kasachi, Louisiana, and at that time I didn't know what gibberish was. I didn't know samurai chatter and all of that. It was for us there. We heard it, and we both said, what the hell was that? <laughs> I mean, it was loud, and it was that following... <coughs> October after that, that I heard about Samurai Chatter in the Nubby, Oklahoma. Ron Morgan was there. It's the first time I'd ever heard of that. Never heard it again until this night. And I just call it gibberish. It doesn't sound exactly like Ron Morgan's recordings that he had. Anyway, uh, so I heard from the wood, wood area, it sounded further off, but it was clear. You know, uh, uh, just a real short, like maybe I mean, three seconds, uh, the gibberish. And then, like in an answer to it, in a totally different tone, how we all have different sounding voices, this one was different sounding that answered back. In my head, it was answering the first one. And then within just two seconds between where those two were and where we were in our tent was this real deep, Sounded. I envisioned the, the big daddy to come in and said, uh, <laughs> It was whatever he was saying. It was longer than that. And it was, you know, probably three or four little groupings. Whatever he said was kind of like, get your butts back home or whatever. <laughs> but within just seconds of him saying whatever he was saying, you could hear snaps and then splintering and it was a tree falling. And I don't know if he pushed it over, if it was a coincidence that it fell right after he was pissed off, but this huge tree fell. And I was like, oh my God. I was so excited because I'm like, I got my audio recorders out there. I mean, I was beside myself. We both were like, can't freaking believe this. And, but after that, no more, no more. And we didn't know it, but right before the tree fell, Henry had come in. She had pulled in. We don't know if maybe that had something to do with the gibberish. Maybe they saw her coming. Maybe they heard her coming. I don't know. I don't I don't know. But she the next we didn't know she was there until the next morning at 6 30. I heard something outside and I thought, you got to be kidding me, not yet. It's daylight. But I looked out and I saw Henry. And we hightailed it out there. We were like, you're not going to believe what you missed. And she said, well, I got here and I heard a tree fall. And I'm like, oh my gosh, just when I was pulling up, this is before we told her anything. She said, when I was pulling up, I could see something running. She said, I could see, see this leg, this part. <laughs> she said, it was like, but this is all she could see. And uh, she said, it was running up that ridge line from the side of our tent, which would have been my side. And uh, cause hers was closest to the woods, but anyway, she and she she heard the tree fall. But anyway, that's the next two nights. Barbara showed up about ten. The next two nights, we had we'd gone into town. We bought all sorts of other stuff <laughs> and uh, tried to hook our parabolics up to a recorder too. Uh, I set my recorders out about seven forty-five that night. Zip tied them back in those areas. Uh, I'll just say, I, don't, I have the recording. We tried to do it to the flash drive. I couldn't get it to 
go to my flash drive for some reason. My computer was acting up because I very rarely ever use my computer. And it began just the screen went black. But I have them on my audio still. I, I did save snippets and I was able to record the snippets back to my audio recorder. And I can play them over the microphone. I don't know how well they'll transfer, how well you'll hear them, but y'all can hear them throughout the day if you want to. Uh, the, the second night when I was setting out, the one by the wood line, Barbara and Henry had been hanging glow lights, glow sticks, like necklaces, hung them all around the perimeter. And I had seen Barbara out there in that area before while I was over here hanging one behind our tent. And so when I'm putting one up back there, I hear that same call. And I thought it was Barbara, you know, and you can hear on the audio, I go, there's Miss Barbara coughing, you know, like she was, I don't know, she was, I thought maybe she was playing with me or something. And I go, Barbara? And she's not answering, Barbara. And then I hear her from back behind me in camp, holler at me. And I turn around and I said, have y'all always been there? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. And I start high telling it back in the camp because I had just heard that cough again right out here. Well, turns out on my other audio recorder, which I'd already set out over behind our tent, uh, it was already yelling. It, whatever coughed, was in that area because you can hear really well on my other recorder. And so I'm thinking they were coming in from back behind our tent. But anyway, um, this, these were behind our tent. This was a tree break. I believe all of this is old. None of it looks like it's, you know, like it was new there. But this was broke. You could see lines of tree breaks, like coming from the wood line, going down to where that ridge line was. You could see just, uh, I'm not used to this stuff. Y'all hear me? Like there's another one, but she, you can see that's an old break. You can see how they're just broken off. Uh, this is Carrie's tent the next day. This is the side that her cot was on, where it actually, you know, grab push or whatever. And you can see how it's kind of petty walkers. And we pull them tight. We like nice, you know, tidy <laughs> tents. We pull them real taut. But you can see the whole top is just unlevel now. Uh, this this is the little potty area over to the left side. Can y'all see it over there? Am I in your floor? No, you did. Okay. And how do you, how do, you do the middle button. On the right? Oh, okay, this area right here, that's that was all pressed down, and we thought, okay, well, you know, we set up the tent, so I'm sure some of this is from us, but that was a really big area, about this big, and it could have been us, you know, we don't know. Uh, now this, I went ahead and put these in there. This were, these were two prints, one's on each side, See hills right here, and the top was toes are up higher. Yeah, the toes were up here. I can't see it when I'm up close. I know if there's barbed wire. Yeah. yeah, this is a barbed wire fence, and the fence had been pushed down the, that section. And we actually were fixing to crawl over the fence, and I stepped and I saw those two prints right there. And Henry was with me at the time. And I said, Henry, look at this. And so I put my, that's my boot, my foot. I wear a size nine, which is pretty darn big. <laughs> so I put my heel level with the heel lines of the two prints. And the toes were up here. I hate how they don't show up for the pictures. But they were, they were a lot bigger than my foot. And it didn't look like anything had shifted or turned. It looked like it had just stepped right over the fence, and there was prints on the other side, too. But anyway, that, that was the prints before I put my foot up there. You can see right here, see how it's pushed up? And my foot came to like right here in the middle. So they were really big. Um, and then in the opposite direction, before we found those prints, down the road from where Carrie and I and then Henry Barber were camping that weekend, uh, you can go maybe three miles, four miles, 
and we were riding, Henry and I were by ourselves that day, it was the same day we found the, the prints. Uh, we went up to a creek bed, and we were standing on this side of the creek bed, and from what we could see on the other side, brakes, just as far back as you could see, and they were all going, the brakes were all going in the, the same direction. And we really didn't want to have to cross that creek bed, bed but we were like, we got to go in there. And so Henry and I went in there, and we walked, we spent probably five or six hours in there, and uh, these were one of the breaks we saw after we went straight back, and then we started going off to the right, we were trying to follow the, the line, the markers, you know, and then we started, we saw that, which we thought was really weird, because there was one on each side going in opposite directions. Now, don't know what that means, but, you know, I think everybody kind of has a theory that when they're broken, in the same direction that they're trying to send a signal maybe who knows but when we saw this we thought it was really interesting uh, that's henry we found all sorts of arches uh, we found an asterisk uh, just tons of pretty little we thought they were pretty structures designs whatever we don't know what made them they did not look to be natural at all. What we really found interesting, well, these were just tons, and it didn't just, that little picture didn't show, it went just loops and loops. It just kept going all the way around. And at one point, I have a video of it, but I can't get it to upload because it's so big. Uh, I have my, my phone, <clears throat> and I'm standing in the middle, and I can go in a perfect circle. So it was a huge circle. And there were tree breaks, all the same height, all the way around in this huge circle. And this is all out in the same area. These, these bows like this, we, that's the asterisk. We all go back to the bows. The asterisk, that center one that comes up is in the ground. The big one, that comes down from this corner, it it was not in the ground, it was put there. The other ones, of course, were put there. Now, if you, if you moved anything, they would have fallen. But that was huge. It came, came this high off the ground. So it wasn't your little ones like you see a lot. That was a really big one. These were bowed over and the ends were stuck back in the ground from where they were bowed. And we stuck back in and they were still alive as you can see that's why i said they were pretty and it was beautiful back in there i mean it was there were tons of arches and bows and designs and all sorts of stuff now this this here and then it forks this branch is on the back side of this big tree can y'all see what i'm saying i'll try to get back up here um, the, this tree starts back here and it's behind the big tree. But it came up and it was pulled to where it comes in front of the tree. And then it goes behind <coughs> this tree. See how it goes back behind there? And then it came back around and this branch goes behind this tree and this branch goes in front of that tree. So something with hands had to maneuver this. Maybe, uh, I can see green, was this green? It was a year ago last week, so it was hot. It was, it was summer. I've got a uh, similar story I'd like to tell later that's probably pretty close to this area. Okay. It's kind of phenomenal. And there is a video online that I'll talk about. Yeah. Um, so there was lots of instances like this where you could see things had been woven with fingers. This one right here was pulled over and it went back behind those trees but I didn't get it on the end where it's woven over it's pulled between two other trees and it's woven the same way but back here was a big tree that was broken and pointing and then over where that was pointed to there were tons more that just went down in the road of uh, lines and decorative bows I guess you could call it this is another one where 
you can see that it was wrapped. This one here is actually on this side of the vine, but it was pulled back behind that tree. And then this branch, which was on the back side, was pulled up and around where it's wrapped around the front of the tree. So something has, has been wrapped on. Now, where we were camping that night, you can come out, walk from here, I guess where that little campground is around the corner right there, and you can go back up in the woods, and that's where we were finding some of this that I'm showing. This particular instance, there were branches, huge branches, like that right there, that had been, it's not the same tree, they had been brought over to it, and it stuck up, and there were three sections like that, like maybe they were starting a teepee or something, I don't know, or they just didn't like them where they were laid. But back where the bows and all the weaving were, we found these two trees. These were very long trees. If I'm standing here, the end of the tree was past uh, Gabe's uh, big dog's truck. And I mean, they were long. And they weren't really big. They were about this big around, you think? You know, the, the trunk was maybe about this big around. But they were heavy and they were so long. The one right here, you can't see it in this picture, but it has roots like this one does. They have been shoved down into the ground, probably about this far, but you couldn't pull them up because they were in there shoved so hard. We looked all around the area. We couldn't find anywhere that they had come from. There were no holes right there where they could have fallen over out of. Uh, you can kind of see how long they are there, but they were stuck up. Both of them were stuck up on top of each other between those little branches right there. We found those uh, that weekend, and we went back out there with some friends of ours uh, from Beast, uh, the group Beast Bigfoot Evidence Analysis saw this team. Mark Newell and Larry Porch came from Tennessee. They came down, and they camped with us. This was in September when we had that incident. They camped with us the first part of November. And we camped in the area behind where we were, where those branches are stuck up in the tree that I just showed you. We all camped there. And then Carrie and I went back one night while they were camping with us. And we set up a dummy camp in our same location. And we set out there. And they said where they were at, because we thought they were coming through those sections of woods to come down to us, possibly. Uh, we, we had eye, eye shine in the tree line. Could have been a raccoon, we don't know. Uh, we didn't really have anything happen. We didn't say it. was the eye shine? It was a reddish color. We didn't see it, but on the video, that we, we'd scan the video, and uh, one of the guys that does a lot of the analysis for bees saw the eye shine and sent us a video and you can see it. But it was up in a tree. But I mean, it, it could have been anything, you know. It could have been an animal sitting up there. We heard it sounded like a fox. Uh, they heard that in camp. We, we just didn't have anything. We had something thrown or dropping. At first we thought it was being thrown, but then I got up and went and looked and you could see the, the huge acorns and walnuts and stuff. Something in hit her truck. Uh, I think it was probably just falling out of the tree that night. Anyway, uh, we did have some calls. The guys did calls. We don't normally do calls. We sit and listen. We act normal. We camp. Uh, we sing. We play music. We talk. We get loud. We let they know we're there, you know. Uh, but the guys did calls when they were camping with us, and they got answers. They had us do some calls, and we got an answer or two, and then we went down the road, and we went to the area where we found all of this to show them, and at night, when we were going to that area, we got callbacks. Um, we saw a lot of eye shine all night. The guys went with us. We went back to this area. Again, this was in November that we go back, so two months or so. When we go back to this area, there's tree breaks all around. And I didn't put a picture up as we were doing it while we were, and I didn't want to keep adding pictures. But there was a tree break. I have it on my phone. Y'all go and look at those pictures. And these two, were there two or three tree breaks that weren't there originally? Yeah. 
I think there were two tree breaks that weren't there in September. But the thing is, when we took the guys back out there where all these bows and the asterisks and all this stuff was, it wasn't there. It was all gone. So, I mean, we found maybe two areas that had some bows that had still been woven. They shot some videos. Now, the trees were still there, which was awesome. Uh, but all the other, it was gone. And that was interesting. I mean, I don't know anybody that's going to go out in the woods and make stuff, the human, and then go back and take it down. But it was interesting to us. I mean, it's all interesting. We can't say what it was, but we think we might have an idea. <laughs> this is the, the two trees. You can see that they're, they're long. They're huge. We couldn't, we couldn't get them out of the ground, you know, that root that was stuck in there. We tried to pull it. Of course, we're women. Anyway, that's it. I have audio. Um, I have some of the. I didn't. I cut it in snippets because it's you know hours and hours and hours. Um, I can try to play it over the microphone. I think we can probably one directly. Well, it's only. It's only got those two. Don't you need that gibberish? Yeah, the uh, the first two what I call the younger two. Uh, they were real quiet. I got real loud on this yeah. <laughs> They were further off, so they don't, you can't hear them as well on the audio, but the what I call the big guy, the big daddy, I've got him, the little snippet on here. Uh, the tree that fell, I've got it on here. Of course, you know, it just sounds like something crashing. Everything's so much better when you're there. Yeah. And, and then you can hear the tent being hit. Uh, the two, the two times that it hit the, my corner of the tent, that was when it was the loudest because when it got to her corner, it just pushed her. But you can hear that on, on the audio. And I'm going to need to do this. Can I hold it? Okay. Now these are just really short.
one sounds like a growl, and then another growl, and then a whoop and a growl. This is only 45 seconds long. And a 
Bader Sam up now? She's heard of the call in Amy, right after me. Which is, we had the grandson with us one night camping, and he, he's constantly well, talking, Mimi, 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 Mimi. And in the middle of the night, she heard. No, Amy. in the middle of the night, it was in, it was in the morning, right at dawn, and I went to her to, I was laying there, everybody was asleep, and you know, and I heard some birds out there, and the next thing I know, I heard, Mimi! <laughs> Mimi! This is just a little snippet that I made of one of the other calls. I think you might hear this one a little better.
can say to have been a female because honestly, when I was hearing it, it sounded so much deeper than this. But you're probably right. Your recorder was like, look, I feel like I have a deeper voice. Like then, when I play myself back on recording, some of that, yeah, yeah, some of that, like that baritone sound kind of gets lost. And I sound. I hope I sound different. Recording because I sound like a hit with that. Because it was on a different setting and so it wasn't until you had asked about a flash drive I was like what we're just gonna talk <laughs> and I thought well I'll get it out and I'll play with audacity so I had to mess with it to see what I was doing I don't know how to read it that David, makes sense. who's that Air Force guy that linguist that uh, studies that was absolutely you have audacity with you yes oh, oh. What's that guy that works on the Olympic Project? Well, David? Who's the guy that works on the Olympic Project? He's the uh, the audio guy. Uh, is it David or? I don't know about Randall. Yeah. Derek Randall? No, no, it's no, not Derek. I think uh, we, we need to look at this a little closely. If we put it on Sonic Visualizer, you'll be able to see it, what hurts. You can hear your crickets, which are going to be up high. Yeah. Your bass sound, and then around 400 to 900, you'll see pick up language. But it'd be interesting to see it. What's what so works. weird? You can, you can do that on Audacity. Yeah. You know, how you change it. I like using yeah. Sonic Visual. So, Sonic Visualizer does a much more detailed yeah. analysis, actually. But I'll tell you, Adobe will do it. Adobe will do it. It's good. Yeah. You have to. Is that what the, what the phrase would be? Linguistics? Well, as far as somebody that can. For a linguistic, I think you use it. There yeah. have to be so much. Yeah. You have to hear the same words. This is more. Yeah. This is this more. This is more. Linguistics is going to be very specific to like the player. Language study. Yeah. This is still general audio. 
sounds like um, both I mean, there's some people that can hear something and say, oh, that's Spanish, and oh, that's French, right. and all that, you know. Are there any local tribes in the area? Do I just pull that out? Yeah. 